to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to the Holiday Shopping Guide edition of Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. Your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And uh, like I said, this is the Holiday Shopping Guide. So if you like what you hear, or even if you don't like what you hear, click subscribe and uh, tell your guitar playing friends all about us. Indeed. So, yes. So, Jesse, what have you been up to this week guitar-wise? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I always say that. What have I been up to? Um, oh, playing through chords, basically. Um, going back to the uh, the post-caged uh, various string sets and just trying to get them under my fingers again and noodling around. It hasn't been a very productive guitar week for me. So, oh. Yeah. I, I'm in the same boat. I even had some prime guitaring opportunities with my uh, wife being away on business oh, uh, no. earlier. Yeah, and it just it didn't come together. It was work and all these other like grown up things I have to do, and so I did not get a chance to play. When I have played, I've been playing um, Cherry Red Wine and working on the rhythm for that. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got this sort of new rhythm so, um, pattern, if you will, I've been working on. Record a little bit on my new loop pedal play that solo over top of that pretty cool stuff and uh yeah but i think i think i need to start working on a new song or something i think i kind of just need something to push me over this hump i think that i'm in songs are good because you uh you know that you have a definite end point <laughs> yeah <laughs> when you can play the song you can play the right. song whereas it's like well i just want to generally get better at this sort of thing of these chords it's like there's really no good end point yeah well, and that's where I've been for a while now, which isn't a bad thing. Like, you know, that's part of what you have to do to get better. But mm-hmm. I definitely think I need a little structure now of a song. I just have no idea what song I want to work on. I'm just, yeah, I'm at a loss. Right. So I think what I need to do is go through my music collection, listen to a bunch of music and just say, okay, what do I want to play? The bleeding, my five finger death punch. Ah, I really want to play that, but I, I have I have nothing that does drop B well. Um, yeah, it's. <laughs> did I tell you about uh, about that? So I was teaching this to my student. So I guess technically you could stack that on what I was doing, and uh, <laughs> so I learned to play that. And uh, but just for ease of use, we uh, we I made a tuned up version of it. Okay. Did I tell you this? No. And, uh, yeah, so I I scooched it up to like E. Which, of course, is quite a jump, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I think they played in, I think it's C, is it B? I can't remember. But um, so, you know, it actually sounds okay. The algorithm for speeding up was not too bad until he starts singing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. you know, an angry gnome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well. <laughs> uh-huh. Good song, though. <laughs> So, unfortunately, uh, guitar fans, we do not have much to talk about when it comes to what we've been doing this week. But that's uh, all right. Some some weeks are like that, as we all know. we're honest. Hey, <laughs> you get nothing but honesty here on this show. All right. So, uh, why don't we go ahead and move into our next segment then, uh, This Week in Guitar History, and uh, or this fortnight in guitar history even. And, uh, Jesse, you found a couple of interesting uh, things that happened this I week. did. Some sad things. Of course, you know, as history goes on and more and more people are born and more and more people die, there's just sadness and happiness. So, Freddie Mercury uh, passed away on November 24th, 1991. Um, uh, the bright spot of that was that really awesome, you know, Freddie Mercury concert, you know, where all the bands came together for AIDS, and that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, on the also on the twenty fourth in ninety three was uh, Albert Collins, um, the Ice Man, who had a really um, ice picky sound because he used a Telecaster with that usually with a capo pretty high, so he had a very high pitch sound. Um, died. Um, but on the 27th, uh, Jimi Hendrix was born in 1942. So that's good. Wow. So Thanksgiving will Indeed. be his, uh, I, I can't even, I, it's so late for me right now to do math, but <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing. 72nd. It would have been a 72nd birthday. All right. Wow. Yeah. I think he'd wow. be playing the blues with the, with the masters type of thing. I don't, I don't know that he'd be like. 
playing behind his head with screaming Marshall Stacks at 72. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if Hendrix was still alive today, it would be him and Clapton and Buddy Guy. Yeah. And B.B. King doing the Eric Clapton you know, Crossroads uh, Guitar Festival. Wouldn't right. that be of a hell of a thing to say? Indeed. Or a Muddy Waters tribute or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something along those lines. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It's some sad stuff. Some good stuff. Uh, Albert Collins, master of the Telecaster. Um, you know, excellent player. Freddie Mercury, not a guitar player, but... Uh, but I gotta mention him because he's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe one of the greatest singers who have ever lived. You know, it's kind of a bold statement, but that's what we do here on SST. We do bold statements. Throw it out there. Let it hang yeah, that's out. That's right. Yeah. And, and hey, if you don't agree with me, post a comment. And if it weren't for Freddie, you know, we wouldn't all, more than likely, wouldn't all have Brian May in our CD collections or right. download collections. And boy, I mean, he was a major influence. Well, and he passed away at a time where I was uh, too young and too stupid to appreciate him. Oh, yeah. You know, I was like in middle school, early high school, and I wasn't listening to anything that wasn't metal. And so, you know, I was like, oh, Freddie Mercury, I don't care about that. You know, right. but now looking back on it, it's like, yeah, he's, he's awesome. Well, at the time, actually, I mean, at that point, I'd only really listened to the bigger records. I mean, anything after sort of Bohemian Rhapsody, you know. Um, but there's some cool stuff before that. I mean, and some heavier things too, you know, off a of sheer heart attack and, you know, so it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, let's, why don't we go ahead and move on to like the big part of the show this week? Uh, we've got the holiday season coming up and I, for one, am a huge fan of holiday shopping. <laughs> I became it, much more so when Amazon came online. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is that. No, no. The crowds. <laughs> I like it all. You know, go out there and uh, just just watch people. They, I don't believe you can get really great deals in general unless mm-hmm. you, you know, want to do the real crazy like 5 a.m. And I have done the 5 a.m. thing before and I've done the midnight thing before. But I'm kind of uh, over a lot of that. I just like going to watch the people. So we thought what we would do this week um, is talk about holiday gift ideas for the guitarist in your life, even if it's you wanting to buy yourself a present. Like, I probably will buy myself a present. Sweet. (laughs) Yeah. So um, what we thought we'd do is talk about different gift ideas for a guitarist at all various price levels, basically, from inexpensive ideas for the someone you maybe only kind of care about to the really expensive people that you truly love. Because we all know the more you spend, the more you love that person. Exactly. So. <laughs> Welcome to Capitalism 101. <laughs> That's right. So uh, let's see. Why don't we start with some ideas and then we can talk about what we want for Christmas. Um, so. Inexpensive ideas. These are kinds of things that are nice to put in the stocking or, you know, nice little surprise present. And what's great about guitars, guitarists is that the kinds of presents you can get them run the full gamut of inexpensive to That's just, true. you know, stupid amounts of money if you want to spend stupid amounts of money. And so we thought some of the inexpensive things would be um, things like picks, strings, straps, capo, guitar stands, tuners, all these kinds of things you can get. Uh, many of them under five or under ten bucks or under five bucks even. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, they make great stocking stuffers too. They, they do, and they're easy Thanks. to figure out what's going on because you look whoever that person is, your husband, your wife, your kid, your father, whatever it is. Um, you can pretty much just look at what he's using <laughs> and figure that he's going to need more of that. <laughs> so more strings, more picks, or whatever. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, and so I thought I would make some recommendations, and Jesse, I thought you could make some recommendations, and just remember that all guitarists are different, and they all have different tastes, but if you're looking to start somewhere, maybe some of our suggestions would help you. Uh, As far as picks go, I have been, for a few years now, a big fan of the Dunlop Big Stubby. Uh, It's a three millimeter pick. It's almost like a bass pick. Uh, I use the two millimeters, but I use the same thing. I, I've got the two, twos as well, uh, but I've gravitated towards the threes. I don't know why. I like the thicker feeling. And, and you, can, head. you can pry stuff with the three. I have a few here yeah. somewhere. And, uh, man, that's a slab of plastic. It is. It is. There's very little to no give uh, on that pick. You know? So if you like a hard, rigid pick, uh, I think it has a nice pick attack to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
you know, it's it's the way to go. And so you've been playing the twos? Yeah, I like the twos. So oh, electric guitar, actually. For acoustic guitar, yes. I like something a little thinner. So I tend to go toward a, like a medium, either the standard celluloid or like the equivalent in a Tortex. I tend to like those uh, because they need a little bit of flex with the heavier strings on an acoustic because you do that, you know, bang yep. rang, you know, strumming thing sometimes and, you know. Yep. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, when I play acoustic, and there are rare times I play acoustic because uh, I can't play acoustic, uh, I, I still use the uh, the big stubbies. I probably should try something else because maybe that would actually help. Um, all right. Uh, what about strings? Can you make a recommendation for people on strings? Wow. <laughs> what, whatever they play now. <laughs> Buy more of that. <laughs> yeah. um, strings are funny because they're so – well, actually, the you know, picks are, are – uh, are individual too. One nice thing about picks, and I don't know if you can do this online, um, but if you can go to a store, is buy like one of a ton of stuff, you know, and you'll probably annoy the salesperson, but that's what he's there for. Uh, <laughs> so, because one of the things I like doing was doing that and then just trying a bunch of different things. And, you know, we get into ruts sometimes and maybe just trying something different is is neat. So that might be something, you know, buy a half dozen of what they already use and then buy... 12 different whatever and say, hey, have at it. Yeah, um, if you're not a musician buying for a musician, if you go to a, a, a guitar store or a music store, what you'll see a lot of times is a tray. Yeah. And have a whole bunch of different pockets in it and maybe each pick 35 cents, whatever the case might be. We're not talking a whole lot of money here. And I did that, exactly that. When I first started playing guitar, mm-hmm. um, I played for like maybe a few months. I was like, okay, I need to figure this pick thing out. And I just bought a whole bunch of different picks and yeah. all of them now are in a box somewhere because I gravitated towards one. But that's a, that was the whole point. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, but you didn't so, spend yeah. that much money figuring it out, which is nice, you know. No, maybe 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 three dollars. Yeah. Now strings you know? are harder because you have to install them. <laughs> you yes. Know? So you kind of have to, um, you know. We it's nice to try something different once in a while. So um, you know, maybe get what the person uses, and then maybe just something else, probably of the same um, gauge. Like if they play yeah. tens, you want to get a set of tens because to change gauges, you really have to readjust a lot, and that's uh, can, can be a pain. Um, but you know, it's like you know when I saw those uh, the blue strings or whatever, it's like okay, that was cute, but <laughs> eh, then you find out no, that's not. <laughs> but it was fun for a while. <laughs> yeah. So the guitarist in your life probably has a box somewhere um, wherever they play guitar, and in that box or container or something is probably strings. Or, if nothing else, packages that strings came in. And uh, if you grab one of those, take it to your local guitar shop, they will be more than happy to help you out. But you're right, the gauge is critical. And, um, you know, there's 1046s and 1052s, is that right? Um, so your sound just cut out on me, Jesse. How's that? That sound, there you go. Okay. I don't know if our listeners heard it, but I heard it, so I just want to check. I will add uh, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, if they play 11s or 9s or whatever the case might be, you definitely want to stick to that. Uh, string brands, uh, I've gravitated towards two, uh, flip-flopping back and forth between Daddario, um, their Nickel XL, and then um, the Elixirs, the NanoWeb. Yeah. There's the ones that I've been hopping back and forth between. Yeah, I like the Elixirs a lot. and I use the uh, the Polywebs for the acoustics and the NanoWebs for the electric. Um, acoustic a little heavier. I use 11s and then polywebs or the uh, electric the 10s. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they're great strings and they last a long time. And I mean, I'm not real partial, but I mean, I think most of the strings that I've used, whether it's Fender, Ernie Ball, GHS, where, I mean, they're all pretty high quality strings, but I like the ones that last a long time because I'm lazy. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I've only had one bad set of strings that I just did not like. Other than that, I mean, I've I've got some Ernie balls right now in my Strat, and I'm happy with those. And mm-hmm. uh, but you know, once I burn through the Ernie balls, I'll probably go back to the Daddario because it's just creature of habit, or the elixirs again, creature of habit. I will say that um, there was a time when I buy like there there are some cheap strings like uh, if you go to webstrings.com, they uh, I don't know who makes uh, who actually manufactures them. We've mentioned before that there's only a few actual manufacturers manufacturers of strings right um and those were pretty good but i've had some like the musician's gear which is i think musician's friend and guitar center's like sort of house brand that are terrible (laughs) yeah not that the sound is necessarily bad or whatever but for some reason they're wound weird at the end where the, the ball goes on where they 
often probably, I don't know, a third of the high E strings, they're no good. I have to use another string because they just won't tune up. Once you get close to pitch, they unravel. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's terrible. So, you know, it's like, okay, put a second string on, does the same thing, maybe after a day. So then after finally stealing from this elixir set or something, it's like, all right, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, because then you have a, a set with a missing a string, and right. yeah, it's and, and and you never have to replace the the sixth string, the low E. Exactly. And so you know you had those things forever. Right. Um, yeah, they, those don't break on you. So uh, let's see what else were the inexpensive ideas uh, we had talked about: straps, cables, capo stands, tuner straps are uh, a good present. Uh, oh, yeah, keep, yeah. Uh, they're always helpful to have, especially if your uh, guitarist has a lot of guitars. They probably don't have enough straps. Yeah, usually. I mean, for the longest time, um, I would just swap straps from guitar to, to guitar, which can be cool, except, A, you can't use strap locks that way unless you get a set for every guitar that's exactly the same style. Um, or um, it's just the pain of, of swapping. So um, actually recently I ended up buying three of those nice padded leather you know, straps because they had them real cheap on eBay. <laughs> they, had, they had three available, so I just bought them all. Um, now I have enough straps. Okay. And that's a taste call. I mean, some people like the really slick, you know, um, what do they call it? Like seatbelt style uh, nylon, yeah. you know, thin, whatever. I like a nice, thick, three inch um, wide um, leather, you know, like love leather strap, you know, with a little bit of padding in it. Some people like the sheepskin backing. I mean, it's really up to the player. Yeah, um, but if they don't have a nice strap, then pretty much any nice strap is going to be awesome. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Something a little wider with a, with some kind of padding in it, you know, that's nice. I have a lot of cheap straps. Um, <laughs> I do, I do. There's this brand called Rocksteady that I've picked up at guitar centers, and you get them for like fifteen bucks. And... Skulls and crossbones and stuff. No, no, no. It's all they're all black. <laughs> they're all black, and uh, they have. Uh, I, I don't even know what the material is. That they're not leather, um, and I'm sure that the the name will come to me after we get done recording. But uh, they're they're really inexpensive, but I like them. They mm -hmm. work well. Sure. Uh, now, if I were to ever try a real nice padded strap, I might change my mind. But uh, yeah, I like them because you can get them inexpensively, and they just they work. Uh, strap locks are a good. You mentioned those. Those are also a good inexpensive idea um, for uh, guitars. So they don't have because what the strap lock does is keeps the strap on the guitar and doesn't fall off, which right. we've all seen that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you do that trick where they flip the guitar around their back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't try that without strap locks. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I wouldn't do it with one, but there you go. I wouldn't either. Yeah, it's like I would just break the neck off the guitar or something crazy like that. So yeah, so these are a bunch of inexpensive ideas um, that are great stocking stuffers. If you uh, want to bump up uh, the price for um, your your loved one. There's a good selection of mid-range objects, too, that you can get. You can get replacement pickups, tuning keys, effects pedals, cables, um, pickups. We both, I think, have a good experiences with Guitar Fetish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, great place to get pickups. Uh, you know, you want to know your guitarist pretty well before you start buying uh, pickups for them. You know, what are their tastes? What do they like? See if they have a wish list somewhere. Um, because pickups are not trivial to swap in and out. If you don't play guitar, you might not realize that, but it involves soldering and taking the guitar apart. And us guitar geeks, we like doing that. Right. It's fun, but we're not necessarily interested in doing it and then immediately doing it again. Right. Yeah. And if it's not the, exactly the right thing. Uh... Yeah. It can leave some bad taste. You don't want that in a Christmas gift. You know, yeah. So unless you're time investment, I would say, unless you're, a guitarist yourself, you probably shouldn't buy pickups for uh, a guitarist loved one unless your loved one says, this is what I want. Yeah, that's true. That that was actually the history of my high school. Uh, after I started playing guitar, um, I, that's where it would get. I'd look at the catalogs, you know, and this is what I want. It got to the point where by the time I was, I don't know, a senior, dad would give, just give me the credit card and say, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go crazy, you know. <laughs> um, and another thing that is uh, uh, cool, I think, makes a cool present, uh, mostly because I got a couple of these for my birthday this year, are effects pedals. Yeah. You know, um, these are things that 
unlike pickups, are pretty easy if you don't like them to uh, unload. That's uh, true. You know, you can just take them off your board or just not use it if they don't like it. If they do like it, uh, it will be hours of entertainment. Oh yeah, for your your guitarist. Because they will sit there and they will tweak those little knobs and say, all right, one sixty-fourth of a turn does this. <laughs> That's true. Whereas one one hundred and twenty-eighth of a turn makes that sound. And if you don't believe me, get your guitarist a pedal they like <laughs> right. and watch them on Christmas morning. And when you do, buy yourself some earplugs as well <laughs> because you will hear E chord, uh, um, knob twiddle, uh, uh, knob twiddle. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Just the way it works. So not, not only are you giving your uh, guitarist something they'll love, you're also developing your patience. So everybody wins. <laughs> you get a virtue in, as a bonus. Uh, and we also put uh, cables in the, the mid-range list. Uh, yeah. so they're, they can be, and they can also yeah. be cheap. Of course, they can also be crazy expensive. It just depends on where you want to go. But I would say crazy expensive is... Uh, not worth the money. <laughs> so uh, depending on the length of cable, that's probably the biggest question is yeah, if you're talking about a kid playing in, in her bedroom, then you're looking at maybe a 10 foot cable, something like that. 15 max. If right. you're looking at somebody who's a gigging guitar player or well, gigging guitar player probably has his own preference, but right? Somebody who plays in a bigger room, basement, something, then maybe, a, you know, 20, 25 foot cable. Um, cables do sound a little different depending, especially longer ones. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, there's that. But any kind of high quality thing that you would see in a music store, you know, Procos, Fender, DiMarzio, all these guys make good quality cables that should work. Um, and you really can't have too many guitar cables. <laughs> no, I just bought a few more, actually. I, there was a, a local store here. Robert M. Sides had them two for 10 bucks. Oh, sweet. So what I picked the, up a couple. What was the brand? I have no yeah. idea. They didn't have a packaging on them. They basically had... Um, generic. Generic, and they were uh, cable ties that kept them together. So mm -hmm. I'm like, good enough for me. I mean, I won't notice any difference. And they're fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, and you know what? Actually, when you first get them, generics, even the cheapest ones, work fine. It's just that some, depending on the quality of the cable, um, yeah, maybe they go bad after you know a shorter amount of time than something really good. But it's hard to tell because I've seen like generic ones that actually were made out of really good parts. You know, Switchcraft ends and you know Mogami, you know, cable or whatever Belden anyway, and um, that should last. You know, as long as the soldering is decent. Right. right. So um, yeah. So go yeah. for it. <laughs> Buy cables. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, cables are always a good choice. You know, and going back to the effects pedals, I just realized something. We should probably make a few recommendations on... Um, oh, true. Yeah, how to start. Because, uh, you know, we talk, We have a pedal episode, so you can go back and check uh, our pedal episode. But there's a couple different ways you can go about it. Uh, I think a good first pedal for a guitarist, and if they don't have pedals, I think they would be pretty happy with the orange distortion pedal by Boss, the, the OD1. Distortion Plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good, it's a relatively inexpensive pedal, oh, right. uh, as far as pedals go, uh, and I think everybody has one. Yeah, yeah, you actually you said Boss, and I was thinking the Distortion Plus by MXR. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Boss, you can't, it's hard to go wrong with Boss. I mean, all their pedals are at least decent. And it gets, and they're well made, and they're going to last. It's just a question of do you like that particular sound? Because right. especially fuzz boxes are all so, you know, there's such a range. Yeah. Um, from subtle differences to like everybody makes a copy of a tube screamer, right. so you pretty much can get that if you want just like an overdrive thing, or if you want distortion, get something that says distortion, um, or fuzz, or. Metal zone, kill your mama. Or whatever, right, right, right. You know? um, so yeah, Actually, definitely. Uh, one thing you could do is just go to various. There's all kinds of guitar forums out there where there's polls. You know, what's your favorite guitar pedal or whatever, or like best distortion effect pedals or something. And you'll see, not that you have to buy what they think is best, but you'll see some of the popular ones that are out there. Yeah, and if you, for example, know that your guitarist likes a particular player and that particular player uses that pedal, it might not be a bad choice. I tell you, if, if you don't want to go the effects route, a good looping pedal. Uh, you like and, and they're looper, be, do you? <laughs> yeah, they're going to be a little bit more expensive than some of the other pedals. They could be. Uh, I like my Jam Man uh, Solo XT, I think is what it's called. really like that pedal. 
Uh, and what the looping pedal does just records a section of um, the person playing guitar so they can play it back and play over top of it or listen to how they sound and see if they make any mistakes or where they can get better. And, and so, um, you know, that's, a I think, a good choice. Uh, if you want, we're getting a little high now on the mid-range, but uh, a multi-effects pedal is really right. good for someone who doesn't have anything in their uh, pedal-wise and they're trying to figure out what it is they like. Um, right. Here's so, something, too. With uh, it, it depends on the person. If you know that the person doesn't have anything, if they never listen to their guitar through headphones, okay, if they're, if they're always playing through an amplifier, then one of the nice things about these multi-effect pedals, in addition to having all kinds of effects built into them, is they generally have uh, a headphone out, output so that – and that headphone output sounds pretty good usually. You know, it will sound like an amp with some effects, you know, in front of it. And, uh, and often it will have an auxiliary in or CD in or something like that so that if a person wants to play along with their smartphone, you know, to some YouTube, you know, lesson or their computer with some lesson or something like that, um, if they aren't already listening again with headphones in any way, then this could be a key to, you know, morning practice, midnight practice, whatever they want to do. And it could open up another world of, uh, of that sort of thing if they aren't already doing it. Of course, maybe they just don't like guitar through headphones. So. Right. Well, and some of these things sound better through headphones than they sound through a cabinet or something like that. So That's there, there, there's that too. Um, and actually, mid-range headphones are really a good price for uh, or option for guitarists. Um they have wireless headphones, which is something I'm kind of interested in checking out mm-hmm. because the headphone wire does get in the way when you're playing or can get in the way when you're playing. Right. And um, so that's a nice option as well. I can't make any recommendations on uh, wireless headphones uh, right now. I have on – what do I have on? I have Audio-Technica ATH-M30. I really like these. They're good. Uh, they've been great headphones. I like them because they have the adapter. So um, the plug is the quarter inch and the eighth inch. Right. And the eighth inch screws into the quarter, and it's good to go. So yeah. I have an amp that has the eighth inch, and I have the amp that has the quarter. And so uh, I can use it for both amps, and it's pretty convenient. Yeah, so your headphones and mine, I have the Sony, I think, MDR V, either V6 or 7506, same headphone, really. Um, they're kind of studio-oriented, so they don't leak a whole lot. So... Which is nice if you're ever into recording, you know, you can, uh, when you're close to the microphone, say singing or whatever, you're not going to get a lot of leakage. And they sound good. They have a nice bass to them and everything. Um, other players like something a little lighter, more like Walkman headphones. Walkman, well, that's an old thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm dating <laughs> myself. I think lost Walkman. the second of our audience. <laughs> so that's the old version of an MP3 player. <laughs> Back when you had cassettes. Cassettes, that's right. Oh, God. <laughs> Store your music magnetically and not by hard drive. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, but, you know, lighter headphones are cool. They leak a little more. They don't have as much bass, you know, and but they tend to be cheaper. And if you're just walking around, you know, with, you know, with your uh, MP3 player or whatever, it's easier to deal with. Um, so, yeah, yeah, headphones are a really good, uh, good thing to do. Better than any earbuds, that's for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Stay in. away from the earbuds. I mean, for for the music stuff. I mean, earbuds are fine for the gym. They're fine for walking around. Actually, they're probably better for walking around. That way you don't get hit by a car. You that's can actually true. hear the things around you. But when you're wanting to do guitar stuff, music stuff, I think um, headphones yeah, are, are the way to go. All right. So let's get to our, our, our last sort of tier. And this is the tier that my wife should pay uh, extra special attention to. And this is the, uh, the expensive high end tier. Right. Um, and this is where, you know, sky is the limit for uh, people. And we have some traditional things like guitars and amps we could talk about. Um, some things you might not expect, like recording equipment. Uh, or lights. If they're a gigging guitarist, they might really like to have a set of uh, lights. That's, that's you got to really love the person for that one. But you know, there <laughs> a you go. PA system. <laughs> um, and, you know, I thought before we got to the more traditional stuff, I thought I would drop something that might sound a little strange at first. But one of my most important pieces of practice equipment is my tablet. Mm, right. Uh, I have an iPad too. Uh, you can choose your favorite uh, operating system, whatever it is you like. And it is with me every t- 
time I practice. Every day I practice, that tablet is on. I'm using it either as the metronome built in. Mm -hmm. I have it running to an amp or I'm playing through the speakers to for YouTube lessons to play along with songs that I'm working on through iTunes. Um, if I want to quickly look up a scale or a chord, uh, I've got a book that I write down my notes in and stuff for my lessons, but right there is the internet. Right. And, and so I have a stand for it. That's like a music stand, but it's actually made specifically for tablets. And this one's supposed to be specifically made for the iPad, but you know, whatever, you could probably put it in a tablet in it. And, uh, it's right there. It sits right there beside my music stand and it is very, very convenient. Yeah. Yeah, I use my phone uh, more than my tablet just because I always have it with me. Right. Um, but then I also have, um, you know, a little headphone amp for my guitar. And I, and I do that. I can just walk around the living room, you know, with my phone playing some YouTube lesson or backing track or what have you. And uh, and my little headphone amp, my headphones on and I'm mobile and I've got yep. a studio right there pretty much. Yeah. And there's tons of great apps for, yeah. you know, tuning, metronome, uh, ultimate guitar tabs. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these different um, sort of uh, apps and stuff out there for guitarists. Yeah, a lot of the tools actually, I mean, you don't even need to buy separate things anymore like tuners and metronomes and whatnot. I mean, they're built into these other things. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Uh, so as a kind of a strange option, you might not think about it in a guitar show talking about tablets but or, or, or phones, but very central, I think, to the modern guitar experience right. um, for people who practice and Android or iPhone, it doesn't, or I, the iPad doesn't really matter. I mean, there's apps for both. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Whatever you like, just get it. We're not going to get into that uh, nerd <laughs> fight here, that's for sure. Um, so, uh, boy, you know, you, you watch TV and there's the Lexus commercial where the guy comes outside or the woman comes outside and there's a Lexus with a bow in the driveway, <laughs> you know, and this turns around, hugs the spouse and they get the key in the box or whatever. Yeah. So the guitar equivalent, you know, <laughs> would be you wake up Christmas morning, you rub your eyes or you're just kind of, you know, getting the fog out of your head. You you walk out and underneath the tree, there's this beautiful Les Paul <laughs> a bow stuck on it, but not stuck on it in a way that would hurt the nitrocellulose. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> and so, yeah, I think that... Um, and that could be, I wouldn't say every guitarist dream, but uh, honey, if you're listening, it's this guitarist dream. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, my wife has long quit this show. She hasn't gotten this far on this episode. I was expecting you in the background, <laughs> save your pennies. <laughs> oh, she's out. Yeah, she's out right now. <laughs> Just me and the dog. I don't know if you can see the dog. She's sleeping in the corner of my office here. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's, I think that's the ultimate Christmas experience for a guitar player. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You won't see your you won't see your loved one for the rest of the day. Yeah, that's and if that's a good thing, then go for it. Buy the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good thing all around because you know this person that you really care for in your life has received something they really really love. That's true. You know, true. but you have to be sure about these things. I mean, yes, that, it, it's such a personal thing that like. Honestly, like somebody could give me, and this is no offense to anybody who's a Gibson fan or or a Fender fan or anything else, but it's like you know, if I got a brand new what you what you just said, <laughs> my, my initial thought would be, I wonder how much I could get for this on eBay. <laughs> 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 I'm just not a Les Paul fan. Yeah, I, right. I like yours, you know, but it's you know, um, so it's an individual taste thing. So definitely, if you're buying a guitar, either. Make sure you know what's going on, you know, and sometimes there'll be clues. I don't know, Amazon wish list. Right, uh, right. Or, or in my day, little markers on the guitar catalog. Yeah. <laughs> on the other hand, if you have somebody who's a beginner that just wants some kind of electric or acoustic or something, you know, then, then it makes it much easier. You can sort of just get oh. a generally accepted good instrument. Oh, yeah, and you don't have to spend a stupid amount of – okay, so oh, this Les Paul now. that I have in my mind, you know, this is like a 20 oh, some hundred dollar guitar, right, <laughs> which I'm definitely not going to get. But, uh, you know, for someone who is just learning and they really want to go from that starter pack guitar to um, something that it can really grow into, mm -hmm. uh, easy, easy 500 bucks. Yeah. But you don't even have to go that far with it. No. I, not you could days. probably get three, four hundred dollar 
Uh, I would say look at a um, um, Mexican made strap. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, that's a real good, solid guitar uh, that a person at that level and even even more advanced people love the Mexican made strats. I mean, they're oh, great yeah. guitars. And uh, that's uh, I think a good thing. And, uh, if they are interested in sort of the, the rock metal kind of thing, uh, I'd say uh, Epiphone Les Paul. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, not an expensive guitar. Some people might say, oh, what about an ESP or whatever? Um pretty much go to any store find an epiphone it's a good 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 well-made guitar and then let the person get their next guitar be that esp or whatever sure. the case yeah. be, unless they specifically ask for that and they show you in the catalog well, that's true i mean that depends on the dynamics i mean if if it's say a, <clears throat> a child who just wants a guitar i mean it may be um take them to the store i mean if, if it's that open you know right another thing might be um if they have certain favorite bands or guitar players or something like that you know, if if they're um, oh I don't know if they're into some heavy metal band where the guitar player plays an Ibanez or something, uh, maybe an inexpensive Ibanez is a good bet. Sure. If nothing else, then it has Ibanez on the headstock, so they right. like, gets excited about that. Right. And that's really it. I mean, whatever gets a person jazzed about practicing and playing, I mean, that's really what it is. So. And, and if you're not sure, there, I think that there's nothing wrong with the gift card. No, I don't either. I mean, I think yeah. that's pretty cool. And so you know, you wrap it up and you say. Tomorrow, day after Christmas, or whatever the case might be, we're going shopping. Yeah, and I can tell you right now that that person who's going to get that guitar is going to spend hours on the internet. Oh yeah, Christmas Day, definitely. You know, listening to guitars, seeing what the guitar store has, all these things. You won't uh, sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's almost not quite, but almost just as good as getting the guitar that day. Yeah, yeah that's you true. know. Because you're right, they won't sleep. And guess what? If they got the guitar, they won't be sleeping either. They'll be playing. Right. Um, so along those lines too, um, I, which I think is a present, which is just as good, is an amp. Oh yeah. I mean, everything you said about uh, twiddling knobs and, and hitting E chords and uh, you know all day. Yep. I mean, double that at least for an amp. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, an amp is an easy thing to discount. I know because I've spent the last two and a half years doing it. <laughs> That's true. And uh, I mean, I've lucked into some good amp purchases, uh, but um, that is really uh, an important way of taking the sound, that player sound, to the next level. Mm-hmm. Is a, is a good quality amplifier or a uh, good quality modeler with speakers or whatever the case may be, whatever they're into. There's a lot of different options there. Uh, but the, a way of playing out the sound yeah. is is an important element to uh, your guitarist's uh, experience. And there's lots of different amps out there. If you have a beginning guitarist who is um, – basically using whatever amp came in our starter pack <laughs> right. all right uh we've, we've all been there that's uh, an easy upgrade <laughs> it's an easy upgrade and i would recommend personally the fender mustang one that's a good one yeah i it's um it's a modeling amp um and it comes with software so they can get as deep into the effects as they want uh but the presets i think are good that come with it yeah, And so, you know, for a first time person with a real amp, it was my first real amp. And I would highly recommend anybody who's out there um, thinking about that upgrade. I'm now thinking about what do I go past the Fender Mustang one? That's yeah, we'll have to have another show about that because we're, we're wondering now tubes or advanced modelers or whatever. Yeah. And there's I a think lot I'll, of question there. I could be pulling the trigger before we have that next show. I don't know. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to talk about this over Thanksgiving. You should at least go to the stores. And... Oh, we'll go again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, but I will I will second the uh, the idea of a basic modeler, and, and I do like your, your Mustang. I think that's a good amp. Um, certainly PVs, you know, in, entry-level Vipers and uh, Vox's uh, Valvetronics, you know, they're all very competitive and uh, but I like the idea that it's a very flexible you know there are arguments about whether they really sound like a real the real tube amp that they're supposed to be sounding like but th- what's undeniable is they sound like a lot of different amps and yes. so that's really certainly at least at the outset a good thing because you can sort of tune your ear to these various types of sounds and figure out what you like and then if the kid wants to get I keep th- saying kid like the, this is the only <laughs> option but I mean 
you know, if the player um, gets more into it and really wants a martial stack or an old blackface or whatever it might be, um, then they can do that at that point. You know, and probably at that point we'll have an ear to distinguish them. You know, if there is such a thing. <laughs> well, and and the Valvetronics, I should probably note, has a tube in it. That's true. It has a twelve AX seven in it, and uh, so that's something to be aware of. And I don't know how I I feel about that for an absolute Washington absolute beginner, but like the next the first real amp, because mm-hmm. I don't know enough about tube amps to know how quickly it would need to be changed or. It Okay, it's not biased very high. It it doesn't really run hot, because what it does is actually it's a preamp tube that tube, but they okay. put it in a circuit to emulate power amp distortion. Okay, so it's kind of a weird bird. Um, it, it, players like it. I mean, it's a well respected, especially for oh, yeah. the clean and and um, uh, sort of crunch tones. Not quite as much for the metal stuff, but. Um, uh, so it, it works, you know, so uh, it's a good amp. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And uh, I think one other thing I, I would like to mention, too, because it's a little bit on the low end of the expensive side of things, and that would be um, a pocket recorder. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And you can get those starting at 100 bucks. You can get them at 300 bucks, and probably more. I mean, that's how things work. You can spend as much as you want. Um, but that's a nice handy thing. Yeah. Everyone has, you know, software like garage band or they might be able to record to their phone, but there's something simple about just pulling out a pocket recorder, hitting record, playing, playing it back. That's true. You know, it's, a, it's sort of a musical notebook type of thing. Exactly. Uh, cause I mean, I have garage band, but I would probably record more if I had a pocket recorder. They're like sixty bucks, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just lazy, and and uh, yeah. So, yes, I know. Um, but that's another option. So, uh, before we conclude the show, uh, Jesse, what do you want for Christmas? Oh <laughs> uh, boy, I want something to come up on eBay that I can buy. <laughs> okay, I recently bid on a on a, another copy of my baby and my favorite guitar, mm-hmm. and uh, it has a nice finished it had a different finish than mine it had a really deep tiger eye sort of maple thing going and um uh, unfortunately i was outbid by ten dollars oh <laughs> no. i don't oh. know what the guy would have paid you know but i was i was just dis- disappointed about that yeah um, there's a couple on there now but they're they're higher than i want to pay I mean, and i'm you know i'm cheap so i don't want to just go buy a new one you know i'd like to save right. a couple hundred bucks because i've had good experience on ebay so i'm still watching we'll sure. see um, an amp might be in my future. I don't know. I'm going to kind of, you know, slipstream in behind you on your little <laughs> escapade. Oh, that's kind of what I figured. <laughs> I kind of figured that's how it would play out. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting serious about upgrading my amps. I think that will be an important thing for me to do to sort of take my sound to the, the next level. You need a bigger speaker. I do. I However do need you a bigger go, speaker. You need a 12-inch, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because right now I've got a 10, I've got an 8, and what I have are quality amps, but I definitely need a bigger speaker uh, to, to get some of those better low-end sounds and just, you know, I don't know what that amp is going to be. Like you said, it might be a future show. I've been looking at both tubes and modeling amps, and uh, I've even posted a Reddit a few things for some questions, got some interesting responses, mm-hmm. um, but that's, you know sort of what I would like for Christmas I think <laughs> I think it's coming <laughs> I know I know it's coming I'll probably end up with a new one so alright well I hope uh, that you guys and gals that have been listening to our show have uh, learned something and have enjoyed the uh, show and have gotten some good ideas for getting a holiday present for that guitarist in your life whether it's yourself or a uh, loved one, and whether that holiday is Hanukkah, Christmas, the solstice, whatever it is you celebrate, Festivus. just the new year, Festivus, <laughs> whatever the case may be, it's a great time of year to buy stuff because lots of stuff's on sale. If you so, go on Black Friday, wear your body armor. <clears throat> oh, I'll be out. I'll be out on Black Friday. So, all right. Well, boys and girls, until next time, remember, just keep picking and grinning. Good night. Six Strings and Things, A Guitar Adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. 
You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 